Good morning, Excellency, Honorable Speakers, National and International Guests. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to extend my warmest to all of you to the Cambodia First International Virtual Conference on Mentoring Educators. The themes of mentoring and professional development for educators. My name is No Sunan and I'm a main moderator for this session. Actually, this Cambodia first international conference is held for three days from 21st to 23rd December 2020. And today is the third day of this international conference. It is a great Homer and really from the new generation pedagogical research center national institute of education cambodia to host this virtual international conference your presence at today's session is most important to the success of this special occasion which involves many special guest speakers not only from Cambodia, but also from some countries in Asia, Australia, USA, Southeast Africa. Well, before coming to the presentation session, I would like to inform all participants and our guest speakers that uh, uh, our conference today will go with uh, uh, three session in this morning from seven to nine in the morning and in the afternoon we will have another session we talk about the round table discussion on mentoring and co international cooperation from uh, one o'clock in the afternoon to uh, three o'clock and thirty in the afternoon and one more thing, I, I would like to announce that all the participant mice are muted by default. And if you have any question, please kindly drop them in the chat box. You can also use a headset or earphones to help you hear the presentation well. And please consider appropriate manners when you turn on your video. Okay, now it is time to welcome our guest speakers. Uh, mean, we'll welcome our guest speaker, Mrs. Beverly J. Abi, Dr. Nahed Alde Rasman, Dr. Rachel Ra Lara Alicio. Okay, sorry if I cannot pronounce your name well. Okay, they are a coordinator of the preparing academic leaders PAL, Texas and M University from the USA. Okay, now our guest speaker will say hello to our, our participant and start their presentation. Please welcome. Okay, are you ready? You can unmute yourself and say hello to our participant, okay. Hi. Hello, this is Beverly Irby and Lara. And so, this is Nahed Abdurrahman. Go ahead, Dr. Abdurrahman. Okay. So uh, firstly, I just wanted to thank you for inviting us for this um, wonderful and important conference, uh, especially me and my mentors, Dr. Beverly Irby and Dr. Rafael Lara. And we are working together um, for like now more than seven years. And uh, this one uh, project that we completed together. Um, so in that paper or in that study, we are um, uh, working, we are like examining or exploring the mentoring across teacher career stages. As you know, teachers are teachers everywhere across the world. Um, so the same challenges they face and encounter and the same problems uh, and the same problems and sometimes some, some problems are similar, some problems are different, but the key um, 
cycle of being a teacher starting from a pre-service till retirement is the same. So in each of these stages, teachers need support and that comes from mentoring. So um, in that paper, we will, um, let me go see here. So in, uh, in that paper, we explored what is the literature say about teacher uh, career stages and mentoring. And uh, based on the literature as well, we find that there are 12 stages in the life of the teacher, starting from pre-service to retirement. So as you see, we listed the 12 ones, like starting pre-service, novice, focused, growing, and go through all of the stages till retirement. So in order to know how mentoring influence teachers in the career stages, we formulate our research question based on that. We wanted to know what, how is mentoring represented across teacher various career stages. So in order to, that, to do that, we have several type of reviews, we can uh, do it, but we prefer that we chose to do a systematic review in order to do this because systematic review completely uh, answer our, our question. And the Cochrane systematic review protocol was employed. And this um, protocol was uh, developed by Higgins and Green in 2011. And in order to answer your question or in order to do this systematic review, you need to formulate the problem and then locate this and select the studies that you need to answer that question and then appraise the studies, collect data, analyze and present the results and interpret the results and then improve and update the literature or the reviews. So what we did, So in order to formulate like uh, the, our study, we need to know what we need to include in the study, what we need to be in and what is not included or not considered in that, that, that study. So based on the uh, Cochrane systematic review protocol, that's what we called inclusion criteria. So what included in that study all of the studies that is journals, uh, journal articles or book chapters or reports or dissertation. Uh, of course, we do not include like um, newspaper thing or um, movie or images or uh, some, uh, some like uh, websites thing because this is not, uh, that's like an, in our um, understanding of the topic about mentoring, we just need the academic studies. And then uh, also we included only studies that focused on teacher mentoring. And we focused on the, the studies that speak about teacher career stages. And also studies that published in, from 1999 through 2018. And why 2018? Because this is the year when we started our uh, study. And then uh, studies that included um, teachers in the United States, because if you just Google it or search it online about teacher and mentoring, you might find tons and hundreds and thousands of uh, articles about that, but all over the world. But we wanted to focus on the United States. We need to see what's going on in the literature in the United States. So in order to um, do that, we need to search, uh, not using uh, Google Scholar only, but of course we need to use a very specific databases. So we focused on three main databases, which is Eric Ibesco, Academic Search Ultimate, and BookQuest Dissertation and, and Thesis Global. Those are the, why those main uh, databases we used because most of the academic articles are housed in these three databases. So uh, when we have those searched, we are sure that we will find most of the articles or, uh, or like all of the articles we needed. So we started doing the search and before um, 
before going through the search, I want to give you an advice about know your, t your topic. If you know your topic more much, so when you do the search, you can find if there is a gap or if is there, uh, there is something missing. And I will tell you why in the following slides. So we did the first search uh, using um, our keywords and then we using those three databases and we found 222 uh, studies and as you see, they are like uh, some from Eric Besco, some from academic search and some from the dissertation and thesis global. Uh, and also we excluded the duplicate from that search. So the total we find 220 because we excluded two articles because they are duplicate. Then we did a second search uh, with adding more keywords because we wanted to make sure that we didn't left out or left behind any of the, of the uh, articles or chapters or studies. So in the, by adding more keywords, we find more studies. So we find 428 extra at the same databases. And like, it's like 128 from Eric Ibescu 129 from the academic search and 168 from Brookwest dissertation and thesis. And we uh, also deleted or uh, removed three of the, of the studies because they were duplicate. Then when we looked at the first and second search, we noticed something that two of the main journals about mentoring and mentoring are not listed. We didn't find any articles came from those two main journals. That's why I'm saying know your topic because, because we know mentoring, we work on mentoring for several years. So that's, that's why we know we will definitely find some studies in those two main journals. So when we did the third search on, this, on, this, on those two journals in specific, we find uh, 408 uh, sorry, 100, 401 uh, articles, 270 from MNT, Mentoring and Tutoring Journal, and 131 from the International Journal, the International Journal of Mentoring and Coaching in Education. So the total, the total studies we found is 1,051. And then after we reached out that and we are satisfied with the search, we came to the next step, which is uh, screening the abstract, reading the abstract and see if there is still those 1051 are relevant to our topic or we will exclude some of them. So as you see, this is our Prisma flowchart, and this is like our map what we found in the three searches, like here, like the first one is the total we found, and then the three like uh, squares in here are the three searches and from which databases. And then the last one on the right, like the last squares in the right, this is the result of our screening. Like the yeses, meaning that they are relevant. The noes, it means that they are not relevant to our study. So it means that we would exclude all of the noes out of this study. So after reading the abstract and excluding those are which are not relevant to the, the search we have done, we concluded with three, 365 documents. And those 365 documents um, included like the included one, and then we did this. Um, so we, we did another screening to them and then we find 181 excluded because they either were irrelevant or not in the US setting. And 24 were removed because they were considered duplicate. So the total ones that is completely relevant to what we are doing is, and, to, and we are sure that they will answer our research question was 160. So in that stage, we, dis, like we, we went, to, we moved to the third step, which is reading the full, the full text. 
So we did read all of the 160 studies that in the uh, that we found they, they are relevant. And then after reading them, we categorize the, our finding, what we found. So this table shows that we find like we find in the 160 seven categories here. I mean, some articles speak, uh, or documents speak about pre-service teacher and mentoring. Some are about induction, competency building, enthusiasm and growing, career frustration, stagnant uh, but stable, career wind down, and then career exit. Those are our seven categories that we found from our search. So in the following slides, I will speak more about how uh, what our findings under each category. Okay. So the the first one, which is the pre-service, uh, pre-service career stage and mentoring, we found 16 studies speaking about this. And in those 16 studies, we found that the authors or the 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 the, the contributors speak more about peer mentoring during the pre-service. And they found that uh, teachers can provide access to problem and share the solutions with increases the in critical reflection and self-efficacy, meaning that peer, peer mentoring helps them to increase their self-efficacy. And also we find that in this stage also, Authors speak about mentor mentee diets, and this speak more about when mentors deeply engaged in activities of professional learning communities and professional development. They both make benefit of it. The the mentor and the mentee together they have a benefit of this uh, relationship. And also they spoke about pre-service teacher mentoring experience in the internship time. And this is very interesting because the teacher, uh, pre-service teachers should involve in professional disposition mentoring prior to the internship, because this gives them more confidence and more self-efficacy. And also we find the the some of them speak about the online mentoring and this is um there was like a kind of argument um, some authors find the face-to-face -face is important while some some find online can be another solution and to be honest like uh, now the the increases the 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 talk and the conversation about the online comes like comes in, increasing and increasing, especially after COVID-19, because the 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 face-to-face -face becomes like hard and difficult to to have. So online become another oh, solution. So the second stage was the induction, the induction stage, which means that this the this is the induction, which is the first year of being a teacher. And in that, in that year, teachers need more help to understand the, the instructions, to understand their students, how to help their students. So they really need um, emotional support. And that's what most of the authors speak here about in the induction time. They said in the early career teacher have the challenge of the stress as well as the lack of knowledge of the profession. So mentoring, mentoring meets their needs for emotional support. And that's actually important for teachers in the, in the first year to have the emotional uh, support in order to be more confident doing their job. And also well, some of the, like we find pedagogy in induction and mentoring, and this, this the, the teachers or the, sorry, the authors in that, they told us that mentoring for novice teacher would be the major factor to enhance um, to enhance the teacher quality and uh, and consequently to improve students' achievement. And also, um, we find that also the mentoring is effective tool for teachers who defined as teachers from diverse groups. And um, 
all over the world, it's, uh, diversity is a is a big issue, like even like gender diversity or race di diversity. So mentoring would be the very effective tool in order to help teachers uh, understand the diversity of their students and also understand the relationships with the, their students and their school community. So the third stage uh, uh, is the competency building stage and the mentoring uh, and mentoring and we find eight studies about that. So I think I need to go very fast because it's only four minutes left. So in that part, we find that the competency building for veteran teachers uh, and mentoring and and it's important not only for the pre-service and uh, early career teachers and also, also veteran teachers need more support. They need to have uh, even formal or informal. And the studies show that the, both of the informal and formal mentoring have the same impact on the teachers at that stage. Enthusiastic and growing stage. In that stage, we find that um, most of the uh, articles, there are 15 articles that speak about the positive attitude and mentoring, and they, they, they emphasize that mentoring provides teachers with positive attitude in, in that stage because it creates a, an effective communication with their mentees and also mentors becomes better teachers and become positively transformed by their mentoring experiences. So in the career frustration stage, this is the stage when teachers feel like they have everything and they do not want to learn more. And in that stage, the both novice and experienced teachers encounter stress in the workplace for several reasons. Maybe their students are not helpful, the family, uh, the family are not supportive, uh, the lack of mentoring programs or the, the school administrations are not supportive, budget cut, uh, class size. All of these are kind of factors that affect teachers and lead them to be frustrated. And that's why in that stage, they need more support from the mentors in order to retain in the position. And the stable and stagnant stage, in that stage, teachers are not very motivated and the majority of teachers benefited from the formal mentoring program at that one. And then the last, the, the career wind down stage in that, in that stage um, that we find that um, teachers at this stage believe that mentoring is the transformative experience for them. Teachers were open to, uh, to new possibilities and uh, to new opportunities. So they are willing to get more information and um, to improve their, their career. The last stage, which is the retirement, career st uh, exit stage. And in that, in that stage, which is like even after several years of being a teacher and how can we, and then the, in that stage, maybe formal mentoring would not be helpful, but collegiate mentoring is, is the one. This is when teachers work with each other and when they try to support each other and uh, exchange the experience with each other. So from what we found in that mentoring increases mentees self-efficacy and also it, uh, mentors support the mentees with the emotional and professional resources and support also the mentors themselves, help this, uh, the mentors to be, uh, to be satisfied with their job and their profession. And out of this, we came out with our proposal about what are the, our model of the career, uh, teacher career stages and mentoring. And we call it teacher career phases and mentoring model. And in that model, we have five phases. 
the pre-service, induction, early career phase, uh, veteran career phase, and retired career phase. So in, in this table, you can just see our model. The first one, which is pre-service uh, career phase and mentoring, and this is before being a teacher, when the student, when the teachers were at college. And in that phase, the, what they need, they need uh, peer mentoring between each other. They want also mentor-mentee diet, and they need critical reflection, shared solutions, professional learning communities, shared power, trust, uh, social, uh, social and cultural learning risk-taking educative conversations. And after become, becoming a teacher, like uh, in the first year of being a teacher, the induction phase, in that phase, the, te the mentoring can be include, can include mentor-mentee diets. This is important at that phase. And also structured mentor mentoring, which is like formal mentoring from a uh, more experienced teacher. And, uh, and the trained mentor, the socialization to the profession, connections to community, sense of self-efficacy. And after some time, like uh, in, the first, uh, in the first three years of being a mentor, of being a teacher, that's what we call it early career phase. And in that phase, the teacher needs mentor-mentee diet. This is very effective at that stage as well. And formal and informal mentoring. This is actually like effective also in that stage. And role modeling, uh, building instructional and learner capacity. And then when we move to the veteran career phase, which is like, this is between the 10 years and 30 years of experience. And in that phase, teachers need mentor, mentor mentee diet, and they also need acting as mentors because they will be mentors for the early career teachers, the induction, the teachers in the induction phase, and also the pre-service teachers. Um, they also need reflective articulation of a deep level of pedagogical conceptual, conceptualization and instructional competency, leadership development, knowledge of curriculum motivation, exper uh, expectation known. Uh, co-teaching transformative uh, revention. Uh, and then the last one would be retired. This is like the phase before, um, before retirement, I mean, going out of the school system. And in that phase, they need more collegiate support. So that's the collegiate mentoring would be perfect at that stage. Peer collaboration would be perfect. Mentoring training, and also mentoring uh, induction or early career teachers. So based on those phases, we can see that every, like mentoring not, not only needed in the first years of being a teacher, it needed in every single day of being a teacher. And uh, like starting from be, before going to school, before like when you, the teachers are in college till they retire from school. So, um, but it, it's important to know what type of mentoring we need at each stage, because not every type of mentoring can be fit for, um, for the stage that the teacher is in. Um, and here is some sample of our references. Of course, we have more than 200 references for that paper because we have 160 articles and book chapters and dissertation we uh, screened, but also we have more. So um, if you have a question, I will be happy to answer. And of course, like Dr. Beverly Irby and Dr. Lara are here also, they can answer your questions. And if we don't have time, you can email us after the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, doctor, for your presentation. Actually, you have uh, only two minutes more to answer your question. <laughs> okay, oh, but okay. but in case we have a lot of uh, questions from our participant. Okay, so sure. these questions we will uh, forward for to you through email. Okay, 
No. Okay. And then, can you answer? Okay. Sure. I, yeah. I, I can answer one of the questions. I see one from uh, Dr. Kong, I think. Uh, should mentoring be for veteran teachers and teachers who are retiring soon? Okay. And the reason that that is in there, uh, you saw that there were very few uh, papers on that that had been published. But um, in terms of veteran teachers, there are more uh, than that. They're, they're sort of the in-between uh, stages and going toward the end of their career. But it's important for retiring teachers also to have mentors because that collaborative mentoring, they need some collaboration and support during the time that they're retiring to know uh, what they need to do to even go and get their retirement and what are they going to do in the future and also to get mentor training because they're the ones who can come back and mentor other teachers. And so you want to uh, keep them involved so that they can be uh, volunteers um, or supportive uh, staff to come back in and support the the other teachers who are still in the system. So that's, a, that's part of the mentor training, becoming a mentor and continuing as a mentor, as well as retiring and helping them to have a nice transition into retirement. Okay, thank you Mr. for your answer. Okay, so now it is time to the end of your presentation. So another question we will send you through email Okay, please kindly answer uh, this question for, to our participant. Okay, now I would like to express my deeply thank for your meaningful presentation. Okay, now you can have a break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We enjoyed it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.